None of that. Or something you forgot. See, everybody's forgotten something. You left it out. Just missed it. See? See? And so I can bring this out, what you've forgotten, if I ask you, who are you? Will you say I'm Paul Jones or whatever your name happens to be? I say, oh, no, no. I don't, don't give me that stuff. Who are you really? Who are you? We are live. Rob Mutarelli is the guest on The Lodge today. Rob, how's it going? Dude, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Dude, it's a pleasure. Thank you for bringing uh, some whiskey. Dude, of course. So things get a little weird today. Mama raised me right. Hell Gotta bring shit. a bottle. I, I appreciate it, man. So if today gets a little offhand, ladies and gentlemen, you can blame the sauce. So what's going on, man? What are, what are you up to? Tell the people what it is. Dude, you nothing do. much. Can I just stay to start? I'm so nervous. You're nervous? Yes. What are you nervous about? I, hearing my own voice. Hearing your own me. voice? I could yeah. turn the monitor off. You no, know, it's, I, it's all good. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Well, don't Come be. On, for, if I stutter at all, that's why. It's because I'm nervous. Hey, that's fine, man. That's fine. Don't worry. We'll, we'll calm your nerves real easy. We'll drink some more of the that's sauce. That's why, yeah, that's and why. And we'll be, we'll be okay. But you're in a polka band, right? I am. Yeah, the Bratwurst Boys. The Bratwurst Boys. So who came up with that name? They were a band, actually, before I joined. It was just these three guys. I knew the drummer beforehand, and then I was walking through Platt Deutsch Park out in Franklin Square. Platt Deutsch Park. The, the nice uh, spot. Awesome. Nice they just spot. redid the beer garden. It's beautiful out back. Really? Uh, I'm walking through after a gig with an, another band, and uh, this guy calls me over. He's like, hey, you play trumpet, right? Yeah, and that was it. From the, Five After years later just now. jumped right in? Yeah, I was 19. And now, then, they're older than you, right? Like, you're, are you like yeah, the, the young guy, guy in the pack? So I'm 23, and then the other guys are all... I'm going to be embarrassed now when they listen to it. I got their ages <laughs> wrong. Oh, I think 31, 29, and 27. Let's just call them 30. Yeah, they're all 30 They're all 30. Yeah. At least if we're rounding up. But that's cool. So what do you, what are, do you guys play? Weddings? Like, what kind of events We've do you do? We've done a like, couple weddings. Mostly, basically, if you have a German Oktoberfest, or like a, a Mayfest, Summerfest... And people are wearing lederhosen. You can hire us. Gotcha. So a lot of uh, a lot of festive gigs. Yeah. If it's under a tent, we're there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So what is it? What is it? Um, polka's a law. Lo- like I don't want to call it a lost genre, but it's. I, mean, I hope not. It's paying my bills. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always a niche for everything. I feel like that's what makes the internet yeah. so cool. Is it's connected so many like niche audiences. Yeah. You know, for things that for are sure. relatively underground or not in the mainstream. Because polka hasn't been in the mainstream since what? The 30s, 40s? Oh, I don't know. That, you got to go like 80s. I was say, well, 80s. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's always been there, man. Really? So where are the 80s? Always, where are the 80s? Upstate, the Catskills. You go really? up to the Catskills, you'll find a, a huge German population, like up in that area. And they're keeping it alive. There's like they always had Polka Fest, German Fest up at uh, Hunter Mountain. If you're a skier, so you're telling me there's a sect of people in the Catskill Mountains, New York, that are keeping Polka alive. Absolutely. Is it, is it later hosing year round? Oh yeah, I'm there Friday, this, Saturday this weekend. Friday, Saturday this past have weekend. To, do you have to walk through a portal to get through this place? No, is there like an drive. invisible wall around it? It's like, actually like Hogwarts. There's a hidden entrance. I it's see. It's invisible. I, that's the, that's yeah. what I'm trying to dig up. I got. I got to give my audience something here. I'm you get to the later hose on, there. and it just appears in front of you. That's insane. So you guys do a lot of gigs there. Is you got a gig this Friday? Yeah, Friday, Saturday. Like I said, we're up in the Mountain Brow House in the Catskills, Round Top, New York. And uh, last Friday, Saturday, they had a huge festival. This Friday, Saturday, they're having their summer fest. So. Wow. Wow. And you guys are playing. This yeah. is not the first time you've done it either. No, we were there up in May. We were there last year. It's a great time. It's oh one God. of my favorite places to play because the people are just so friendly. There. Oh, yeah. Great. What's that like? So what? what is it? What unites those those people? What unites your audience? What is it about that that culture, that it's, sound that you think is so It's united? just having fun. It's It's easy to dance yeah. to. It's easy to drink to. It's easy to cool. hey, everyone's just smiling, having a good time. There's I never imagine an a lot enemy. of kicks. I imagine a lot of kick moves in the dances. Maybe I'm a, a lot of Polish wrong. tunes for a sure. A lot of Polish tunes yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. But it's it's just friendship, man. It's a, everyone comes together to hang out, and it's it's a beautiful thing to watch, and it's awesome to be able to supply that for people. Ooh, to supply that for people. Yeah, that's a good point. You know that. Yeah, no, that does remind me. We were talking about it earlier. That does remind me of like the patent pending days. 
I, I, I was glad we brought that up. Yeah, when we used to see each other at the patent pending shows. It was very much like that, too, because it was punk How rock. How long ago? Oh, God, dude. I was like 13. That's got to be a decade ago. It's a decade, because I was like 16. Wow. 16, maybe 17. I don't know. And I haven't seen him since. Jesus Christ. Dude, yeah, no. I like The last time I think I saw Pat and Penning, I was like either 16 or 17 yeah. years old. Back I think at the I donkey think before it closed. The crazy donkey and farming To the Long Island natives. What a venue. What a venue. Man, I, I miss that place. That was, that, was ch- that was childhood. That was yeah, like a rite no, of that... passage for like a 13-year-old, 14-year-old kid that's going to the donkey for your show. Yeah. They had such a nice setup. They had the whole yeah. outdoor space. Right, that right outside. What road was that? Uh, one ten. That? That's Route One Ten. Yeah. yeah, it was Route One Ten. Um, they had that nice outdoor space patio where you could sit at Heaters the tables in the Dude, winter. Every it was cool. They had the bar if if you if it was an older audience. Um, but not like, not in my day. But no, nah, yeah, we were young. We were younger. We were younger. We were totally not drinking. Uh, you hear that, mom? Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I feel like that's that's what makes music cool, man. Music's such a yeah. uniting, uniting thing. It brings people together and it brings it generally brings out the best in people. Like they've done yeah. studies that like listening to like the people who listen to heavy metal, it's actually relaxing them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's why I was interested in uh music therapy for so long and that's why I was going to study for a little bit. Yeah. But like it's just such an interesting thing to read about and talk about. Well, tell me a little bit about it. Well, just what music can trigger in like somebody's brain and that they uh, it's like reading another language or speaking another language in that it can slow the process of Alzheimer's and dementia as well. Interesting. Yeah. And what I was interested about was for like uh, nonverbal autism, like how it can be, in, like we said, an expression, like a way of like, yes, calming you down and like whatever. It brings out the best in people, like you said. Yeah, I know. I think that I'm, uh, it's funny. I, I know somebody like this. Well, I, m- I just met somebody like this, and there was someone on America's Got Talent like this mm-hmm. who was like, they were autistic with a stutter, but when they were able to like play music and sing, yeah. it was fluent. It was beautiful. It was. It just triggers that part of your brain. It's that, just yeah, yeah. It's just something in there. Well, I know the age-old study that like, um, they gathered a bunch of chimpanzees or gorillas. I can't remember which, you know, monkey it was, but it was a monkey, and they would play music in a major, uh key mm-hmm. and they'd be happy they'd seem pleasant but if you start playing something in a minor key they became like unsettled yeah. you know and it's just like dude it's not nat- music is natural it's just simple as that there's yeah but it's almost like it almost feels like it was it was something that was locked away from us for so much of our like primordial being wow you know like That's as deep. we were coming up as cavemen it was like this whole dimension that was just locked away because we weren't playing it on sticks and rocks. Yeah. We well, didn't have anything quite like that. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe some percussive. I'm not a doctor. I'm All no right. doctor. I mean, we're BSing, man. We're drink- we're drinking whiskey, just talking bullshit. But yeah, man. Who knows? Who knows? To think it started with polka. That's a- that conversation. To think it started with polka. Well, polka was all about freedom, as you said, right? Sure. Are we- can we say that? Can we go there? Polka is all about freedom. I'll take it. You'll take it. So. You've been playing with these guys for what? Three years? Uh, this is my fifth year. Your fifth year? I started when I was like... So fourth year. I, I started when I was 19. Started when you were 19. You've been playing with them for four years. That's... Is that your... Is that your full-time gig? Is it a part-time gig? Part-time, basically, like, polka season for me is uh, end of August through November. Polka season? Yeah. End of August through November. And I'm playing, like, at least a gig a weekend, pretty much starting in August. That's interesting. So polka season is, like, on the descent... From summer to winter. Yeah, well, because Oktoberfest is uh, end of yeah, September into October. Yeah, good point. C- celebration of the king's wedding and all that. So I take it you're not a fan of sober October. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll do November anytime, but sober October is not for me. I've been yeah. thinking about doing a, a sober October type challenge. Just I do sober December through February until gigs start again, and then. Hey, that's fair enough. Do you really go three months just completely sober? <sighs> no, but. <laughs> It'll it'll be definitely a lot less. I like I was saying before, like uh, it's a lot of beer flowing at these things, so it it happens. A lot of beer flowing. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, uh, where did you go to school? And you said you had an interest so, initially in studying in music therapy, and yeah, why did you eventually drop? So I started out of that? in SUNY Binghamton, graduated oh. from Calhoun mm-hmm. uh, in fourteen. Went to SUNY Binghamton right after that. Uh, went there for a year, partied a little bit. Decided they didn't have my major. I want. I decided I want to go into music therapy. Okay. They didn't have that as a major, uh, so I decided to transfer home. Uh, had an audition with Malloy, 
Uh, they gave me one day's notice because I was away on vacation when they called me, wow. which was an unfortunate situation. And then when I was starting at Nassau, that's when the Bratwurst Boys found, you. found me. Yeah, awesome. Nick and Greg and Rich. Nick, Greg, and Rich, shout yeah. out. Yeah, if they, I doubt they'll listen to this. I don't care. <laughs> um, well, fuck off, Nick, Greg, and what was it, Joe, Rich? Oh, uh, Rich, yeah. Good. Good, I should forget his name. So they I found just... me, and then I decided I spent a couple years going to Nassau and polking a lot more than I am now, for sure. Our fir- my first year with them, we played 50, like 50 gigs in like four months. Wow. Yeah, it was two, like four a day kind of stuff. So like, you, you enjoy that? You enjoy the gigging lifestyle? How was that? Definitely. I, I'm glad I did it when I, like, I'm doing it while I'm young, because I don't think I could, like... Well, what, I was going to say, so what are the pros and cons? Pros are like going all over the East Coast. We we go up to like I said, upstate New York, travel down to Philly. I think one in Michigan this year. You know, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania. So you enjoy the travel. Where's the coolest place you've traveled for the band? We were in Cape May, New Jersey, like literally the point. Cape May, New Jersey. Where is it? So the northern point or southern point? Southern point in the ocean, on the water, playing this beachfront bar. And And was it awesome? It was awesome. It was so cool. The Would people you go were back so... there as like a non like performer? Definitely. I wish I remembered the name of the place. Now I'm embarrassed, <laughs> but I would go back and hang out. We're playing there again this year on a Sunday, so maybe like same the Friday. Place? Sat- yeah, same place. There you go. So maybe like Friday, Saturday, hang out and drink, and then Sunday play a gig. Hell yeah! That sounds like such a cool place. It was awesome. Right on the water. It was a little unfortunate. That some woman had a little bit too much sauce. And uh, knocked over one, I guess. Right? Knocked over all my instruments. Oh yeah. damn! You were the victim. And it was right after I just got a brand new trumpet from Germany when I was there last year. You have a trumpet from Germany? I do, yeah. I have a rotary trumpet. So it's like a French horn keys or rotors. Okay. It's a sideways trumpet and it's got rotary keys. So what, did you go to Germany to buy it? Was it shipped from Germany? <laughs> Why Germany? I was in... Well, my family's very German. Okay, um, that's a start. <laughs> uh, I've been like I've been playing polka music since 8th grade and I've been German folk dancing since I was 7 years old. You German folk dance? Yeah. What is that like? I don't. It's like inappropriate for a podcast, but I have a video if you want to see. Like I don't know how to describe. If you ever seen National Lampoon, I can, Lampoons, I can put a link to it. They'll be. Do you want me to put a link to it? In like the yeah, I could YouTube put it on YouTube description? or something. Yeah. Okay, we, we'll we'll put a link to it. Look for it in the description. But I'll. Uh, if it's not there, fuck. If me. you've ever seen <laughs> National Lampoon's <laughs> European Vacation, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I haven't seen that. No, no. No. I have not seen National. Okay, Lampoon's never mind. Vacation, that was no. the that was the only. That was the whole premise of it. No, no, no not at all. But there's one scene I would okay. reference, but. Uh, if you've ever seen like guys in lederhosen like slapping their legs and like I've, jumping I've around, I've seen something akin to that. That's yes. Shupala dancing. Okay. Yeah. So I've been doing that since I was seven, and a guy in our club. There's three clubs on Long Island that practice at Plat Deutsch. Uh, one of the guys in our club at the national competition got third, so he was invited to compete in Germany, and we went there for it to watch him and to celebrate and stuff, and then we spent five days after that in Munich with my family. Oh. So and my cousins and my aunt and my uncle came with us. And so like, you've just done a lot of traveling in general. Yeah, my mom works for an airline. I don't know if I should reference it. So That's okay. No, we don't have uh, to go any further than that. She works for an airline. So, so that, comes with, that comes yeah. with the benefits. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, what's your favorite place you've ever been to? Uh, probably Munich, just because it's beautiful. And I Munich? Love, I, I speak a little bit of German and I my family there. So, so. What's, what's, what's waiting for us in Munich? Just like beautiful scenery. Like, beautiful it, scenery. It's, a, I'm down. I'm it's down. a gorgeous city. Down. It's an old city, so it's a lot of like cobblestone and stuff like that. The architecture is gorgeous. Awesome. Uh, it's great food. Yeah. So what? What? What's there besides brat? What's there besides brat? Besides the bratwurst. Oh, what's dude, there besides bratwurst? You, you name it. I, I'm asking you. My, I need help because all so I'm thinking my, is bratwurst. My grandfather's go-to always at a roasted chicken. Roasted chicken. Yeah, just easy, simple potatoes okay. done. Potatoes. I do. You get a Schweinehaxen, which is like a... Schweinehaxen? It's a pork knuckle. Pork knuckle? Yeah, fried. So it's like a pig's knuckle? Yeah. So it's like the part that curls just before the hoof? Yeah. You eat that? It's fried, crispy skin, like tender meat. Dude, it's beautiful. I mean, it is a knuckle. It's probably high in protein, I guess. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, Dumplings, spatzel. Dumplings? What's in the dumplings? You either have bread or potatoes. See, now you're hungry. It's bad. No, it's good, man. It's good. It's good. Food's such an interesting thing, man. I feel like it's like one of the first things we figured out, like as civilized people. Yeah. We figured out how to feed everybody. That's why we're almost like too good at it now. Yeah, there's like like too much food. We're just too good at it. We got too good at it. Um, What what, a thing to be too good at. What a thing to be too good at. I mean, I guess there's worse realities, right? Um, 
but no, I was just uh, I was just in Amsterdam, and uh, that's awesome. That it was a, it was such a great time. It was so much fun. I, I went with my girlfriend, and Very we cool. uh, honestly, I don't know what it is. I think my I think my favorite thing about traveling is the food. Yeah, dude, you I get really to experience so many new things. You yeah. get to see so much culture through how they prepare food. It's as simple as that. Like music is natural. Like yep. food is just so telling about a culture. Bro, and it's like every every place has its characters, right? There was this one guy I saw. Uh, I, he blew my mind. I must have seen, seen him f- like four days in a row. He blew my mind. He had, there was like a, uh, a city square. And he had a first floor apartment on the city square. And he had these beautiful like wide range windows. And he kept them wide open. And this dude is just playing like, the best way I could describe it is like mysticism eastern music. Okay. And he's just doing Tai Chi, like in the mid, like out in the open on the station. Fully square. nude. Not fully nude. <laughs> <laughs> he's dressed pretty comfortably. Like okay. He's in a robe, but he's just. I just look at him like this guy's crushing it every day, yeah. and people that guy's are, living his best life. And let me tell you day. what's so different, man, is people there. It's like they walked by him, like, oh, he's just doing it. He's just doing yeah. his thing. He's doing his thing. I feel like if you did that anywhere here, and, and by here I mean like Long Island. People would have their cell phones oh, yeah. out at you, like, "Hey, look at this freaking guy." I just think of the Bagel Boss guy. That's a self. That's a video the instantly. Fucking Bagel Boss guy. Yo, come this way a little bit. I yeah, want you to get out of the shower. Cool. Yeah, uh, but dude, the fucking Bagel Boss guy. What do you think of that? How, how did you react so, to that? That's I'm a just, complex thing. Definitely a complex thing. Just a quick tangent on that. My buddy, I'm on uh, Snapchat the other day, and I check his story, and he ran into the Bagel Boss guy. He ran into while him? celebrating his boy's bachelor party. And they like took a video with him and took a bunch of pictures. Are of you him. kidding me? It was like just the thing that ha- he was walking down the street in Manhattan or like wherever he was. This guy's famous now. Yeah, I can't believe this guy's fucking. Well, famous. did you see the News Twelve interview? So like the like you said, what do you think of it? Uh, the in- <laughs> sorry, bringing it back. We could go through the timeline. We could we could start. From no, the definitely. Video. We'll, we'll <laughs> start with. I saw it on Barstool. I don't know. Okay, so you but, saw it on Barstool, and it was the like cell phone video of in the in the bagel boss, and he's like yelling at the guy. <laughs> You're not my father or my boss or God, <laughs> which is like such a classic line now. But he's yelling at the guy. And like the whole interaction I thought was like, okay, if they're making fun of his height, he's got the right to get like defensive because that's messed up. I feel that. But I feel that. But there's I, always a possibility he could just be really sensitive. Yeah. And then I watched or projecting a couple of things that were like, yeah, we were making fun of his order. Which is still not okay, but I worked in food industry. You're gonna make fun of somebody's order if it's weird. Yeah. So like, and I and the order was like all egg whites and cucumbers and like some weird stuff thrown thrown in. So I was like, all right, I don't know. I get like kind of snickering at that. And then I watched the News Twelve interview yo, where he compares himself. I'm a modern day Martin Luther yeah, King, dude. That I was like, dude, you shouldn't have fucking said that. Yeah. <laughs> what you are you know, doing? Oh, it's like. All right, so like, let's try. To see it from his perspective, right? He's saying there's discrimination against short men. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, you got, like, jacked up in a bagel spot. You're not leading yeah. marches through Washington. And you got put in the <laughs> ground in a bagel spot, by the way. Like, you didn't you didn't put up a fight for short guys anywhere. <laughs> oh, But, I, you know, I guess the one thing you have to give to him is he speaks his mind. Yeah. You know, uh, he speaks his mind. He's, he's pretty authentic. Definitely, he's being himself and he's speaking his mind. I just you can't. It's gotta suck though, right? Being five being flat. Five, I you know it's I got us. I didn't want to say it out loud, but it's got us. It's just. It's, I just hate every time I see like on a dating site or whatever you're on where it's like <laughs> only six foot and up. Please, it's just like so you're just taking out like half, like more than half of the guys on the earth, right? Bro, that would that would hurt. I'm five foot eleven and a half. Damn. I'd see, I'd be like, oh. See, I just like when you were I a kid, just, you just missed it. the coaster. It's like I you just, want to ride the, the best coaster. See, I don't like roller coasters. Enough. I don't know. Oh, I can't so relate. You, you were just never cut out for this six foot on, above game. Been on like three roller coasters. You're on three life. roller coasters? And I went to Disney with the wind ensemble. Dude, I die for roller coasters. I love them. Really? I just I, love the thrill. I love thrills, dude. I love thrills. I like thrills. and I, I would go skydiving. I wouldn't do a roller coaster. Fair. I see too many of those like... Uh, Back in the day, about like kids getting their like heads knocked off and stuff at a roller coaster. It's oh god! Like, oh god! What are you talking about? See, but like that's you know, Jesus. I guess so. That's why I wouldn't do. I it guess. Right. So, well, how often does that happen now? How often does that happen? Last I, don't know, 10 I haven't years? heard about. I don't know. You grow up this close to Adventureland, it just kind of spoils. 
I suppose. Amusement parks for anybody. I suppose. So what the hell did you do in Disney when you're in Disney? That's I went, that was actually when Disney's, I went on roller coasters. Dis- but that's what's funny. But that was a special circumstance. I was about to say, Disney's actually the theme park where you can afford not to go on roller coasters. I will say, I don't know if I should bring this up because my mom's going to hear it, but uh, my cousin came to visit me. Hello, Mother Mutarelli. Evelyn. Hey. Thank you for listening. Uh, she, uh, my cousin lives in, I've got six cousins, two mm-hmm. guys who live on Little Whale Neck right by, uh, in Merrick. And then two, four down in Florida, all girls. Oh, wow. And so it's four guys, four girls. And one li- was in Orlando. She lives there. And I text her. I'm like, hey, I'm in Disney with the band. Do you want to like meet up and hang out? And she came to meet me at whatever the only dry park is. Okay. I think Magic Kingdom. Okay. Uh, and she's like, hey, I brought like a bunch of booze. <laughs> <laughs> just go get a soda and we'll like make out. And I just got like good and tipsy on like a school trip. <laughs> That's great. Disney's the place to do it. In Disney's Magic a Kingdom. fun place, yeah. man. Listen, I've been to Disney like I haven't been There's there. There's something I was, for like, everybody in Disney. I haven't been to Disney since I was like 16, but I've gone when I was like six. I've gone when I was like 11, 12, and I've gone when I was like 16. At each time, there was something new. You know, yeah. there's like a new perspective just, to take it from. It's and like, plus, Disney's pumping that money, and they're going to change. The oh part. my god! St- the the Star Wars. Apparently, one, Galaxy's Edge is failing though. Really? Apparently, it's not going well. That hurts. Apparently, it's just not going well, and the merch isn't selling. I think Harry Potter World's just going to carry them through probably the next decade, right? Like, probably. There's more, I want to go there so is, bad. There's more enthusiasm in the Harry Potter world right now. The yeah, Harry Potter like subculture. Like, and they're bringing out the games. They got the movies still. Exactly. They're J.K. still. Rowling's getting that bread. I she's know that. getting that bread, and she's changing her characters at left and right. <laughs> I don't know if you heard about that. No, I didn't. <laughs> there's so many memes. It's like, I don't know. She's like, she's saying like that. Um, and I don't know. I've never read Harry Potter, so that's why I'm in danger of butchering the names. I'm in danger of butchering the names. Oh, no. But apparently, like, char- I'll say character X is, like, gay now. Or, like, okay. oh, no, character Y was black this whole time. Just And the no, fans are just I'm like... I'm not cool with that. Yeah, the fans are just like, wait, why? It's like, See, but if it's, it's like, like, why don't you just write a new book? And just like, I'd read that. Like, go for that. Like, yeah. if you want to include more, just write a new book. I mean, if she's saying, like, if she never mentioned it and she's setting it straight, maybe I could see that. But I don't know. I, this is why I say I don't know because I never read the books. Yeah, I never heard of it. So I'm sure these characters were described. Yeah, you know, probably. I haven't read them in so long. I feel long. like that's I, writing I feel like 101. I brought you, it up. But I feel like it's like writing 101. You have to physically describe your characters. You got to paint a word picture for your reader. Yeah, but at reader. what point? At what point is right, I guess, right? I don't know. That, there's like what? Seven books? There's a lot of books. I don't know. I didn't read them. We're the wrong people to have this conversation. But hey, shout I'll out to Jake Rowling. I'll fill this up low. Don't worry. You know, you could you could fill right, it up. On, you could fill it up on camera. It's cool. Pouring some whiskey. It's my first time. I didn't want to break a rule. It's all good. No, no. You could you can say fuck. You, you can you can pour whiskey. Yeah, I or could curse. What? Bit. Yeah, you can curse. You didn't know you can curse. No, I've been cursing this all time. I figured. Yeah. I haven't really been keeping track, but it's probably because that's that. Yep, we're yeah, doing well. I'll we're do. doing well on that guy. And there were some guys who helped. So there were some guys who helped out there. Cheers, Shout out to Chris Lady. Dude, cheers, man. Thanks for coming on. So, Jesus. What a long Killing way! We, what a long way we've come. Yeah, how have you been, by the way? I haven't talked to you in a long time. I do listen to the podcast, so I know a little bit about. Thank you for asking. Um, I've been great. I mean, honestly, this is life keeps getting better. Nice. Life keeps getting better. I keep awesome. working hard. I'm learning to work harder. I'm learning to keep things more organized. I'm not the most organized guy in the world, but I'm seeing a trend of like the more organized I am, the better it it sends ripples throughout my life. Hell yeah, man! And it it, it improves everything else. It makes everything else better. I'm so motivated right now. Yeah, dude, Shit. you got it. You got it. You got to fucking get up every day, make your fucking bed. You know, oh, it's hard. It's hard because like hit me keep, keep it shit, dude. Keep it shit clean is not easy. No, it's not. It's a, it's a habit you have to get into. It doesn't. You know what? It does, you can empathize. It doesn't help being a musician. No, now you just have twice as much shit. Well, like laying we were saying now. with the streaming. Oh yeah, yeah. If I bring home another instrument, my mom is for sure gonna kick me out. How many times <laughs> can I bring up my mom in one podcast? Let's find out. <laughs> let's find out. Let's just let's ballpark it at four. <laughs> so far um, <laughs> yeah if i bring home another instrument she's gonna kick me out so i don't know uh but like i was saying before with the stream like keeping a schedule that the musician shit does not help like nope. I, like i said gigging friday saturday like i don't know when i'm gonna have a rehearsal here get hired like last minute here like something yeah you know it's kind of like being a freelance worker yeah being exactly. a musician it's very much like a consulting freelance like you life. never know what's something's gonna come across your desk you gotta jump at so that's cool man that's cool man you've been crushing it since Dude, well, since, I think uh, I think you started this when you were nineteen, right? The polka thing, yeah. Bro, I had no direction when I was nineteen, none, zero, zero. I was colleging. 
Yeah. I was taking core classes in college. <laughs> I had no... Just standard. I was, I was at college. I wasn't studying. I was just there. <laughs> That's fair. Fair. <laughs> but fucking... You've been doing this since you were 19, man. That's impressive. I have to tell you. That's impressive, dude. It's starting to get tired, like I was saying before. Starting to get tired. Hey, yeah. listen, touring is tough, dude. You're, on, you're in the van. It's, it's you're bar- you're eating garbage. Oh my god. <laughs> like it, yeah, you can't help but just end st- up eating Wendy's. Yeah. And you're stopping at a Wawa or Burger King or like. Bro, it's why like every every time, no matter what artist you follow, um, I won't say no matter what artist follow, but mo- if you dig into their discography, you're gonna find some song that's talking about how hard it is to be on the yeah. road all the time. Cause that's something they all go through, you know. I don't know if I, I showed Chris and I have been to a couple, a couple concerts together. Lawrence, I don't know if he's showed you them. Florence, Lawrence, Lawrence. Yeah, I think he showed me them once because it sounds familiar, but yeah. I can't recall the sound. Their Instagram is just full of like they have an Instagram page for just their van and like the stuff they do and they're like while they're on tour and stuff. They are like one of the best bands. To, Lawrence, like, see the shit there. Not only do I dig how they sound and I love them. I met Clyde and Gracie recently at their last show with him. Cool, but uh. Their van and like the what they're doing in the van, like they always post like what we're listening to and stuff like that. That's like the tour life stuff is like awesome to me, like to follow. That's why I like it's definitely a negative where I'm like, holy shit, this is exhausting. But it's just like I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Nah, dude, it's a that's a blessed that's a blessed life, dude. There's a lot of musicians who would love yeah. to be in your shoes right now. I mean, I don't that's so cool. I'm definitely not like doing anything big like them, but. No, nah, but dude, Just you're doing it. You're do out there game. on the grind. You're playing exactly. pro. You're playing the pro game, dude. Don't act like you're not. You're playing the pro game. I feel like that's part of it is like to be, you got to be like. Got to be humble about it. Yeah. You got to be humble about especially it. But you got to pat yourself like on you, the back too. If you ever, like musicians especially, like if you ever think you're like, okay, I'm I'm good. Like, oh, that's your worst. Comfort yeah. is the poison. You can't get you can't get comfortable. Comfort is the poison, man. Complacency is, it's bad. You're right. But you know what it is? It's, it's such a balance, dude, because like you can't. You can't just be negative by, you, I mean, you can't just be motivated by, like, negative, yeah. like, energy. Yeah. Like, saying shit like, hey, you're not good enough, not good enough, gotta keep practicing. It's like, you gotta pat yourself on the back when you notice you're considerably better than you were, say, like, two months ago. Oh, for sure. You know, those are important, too. That goes yeah. for any, any artist, man. And I feel like everyone struggles with that. Because mm-hmm. it all, I feel like everyone fears falling into that complacency that you're yeah. talking about. It's so, tough. in fear of that, Especially you really don't want to pat yourself you on the back. You don't want to be, like... Yes, this is the best it could be, like, on your first attempt at something. Like, I'm... Another random tangent. I'm doing summer classes right now. Yeah. Five Towns College. So, like, you're... Cool. Oh, I never finished that. Uh, and now I'm at Five Towns, getting my undergrad in music ed. So, I'm teaching. Cool, dude. I plan on awesome. being a teacher. I do uh, after school and, like, a little bit of sub work right now. That's so, cool, dude. Uh, I can see you working that. Do I love kids. I can see I, you working that. I, I was just working with some kindergartners and fifth graders with like a drama program after school. Sick. And like I, they call me Mr. M and like they see me in the Mr. hallway and M. stuff. And they're like, oh, Mr. M, we miss you. I'm like, oh, my heart. Like I just, I, I can't that's take great, it. That's great, dude. And like going that's back great. to Summer Rec, like working there. Yeah, dude. We used to work started. together. God damn it. We used to work together. My brother was your camp counselor. My first. Andy Landy. Oh, Andy my God. Andy Landy. Shout out to Andy Landy. But fuck. Dude. Dude, did I tell you I met? I saw him. Like, oh. Where'd you see him? Because he lives in Belmore house. now. Oh, you saw him at my parents' house. I was hanging out with Chris, and he was there. Hell yes. And I'm like, dude, do you that remember must have been me? He's like, that was I your counselor? I'm like, dude, you cannot remember <laughs> that. Like, it was like, what, 15 years ago? Bro, that's what trips me out. You know David Freeze, right? Yeah, of I was his, I was his sister's counselor. Nicoletta, yeah. yeah and Nicoletta. Joe, too. Yeah, and dude, every oh. time I see them, I'm just like, fuck, dude. And I hung out with her like recently, like a year ago. Yeah, I just saw her recently at one of David's shows and I was just, and she did, she sang a dude, number her, and it was awesome. Yeah. No. Nah. Shout never, out to the Freeze family. She never got up with Wait For It. I'm just saying. Or Wait For It. I remember That's Wait For It. We're, we're That's going way throwback. off on that, but. Dude, you guys are great. You guys always, you guys always draw. I always liked booking you guys when I would book shows because you guys, you guys drew. Thank you, oh, dude. I can't. I forgot that you would book those. Yeah, yeah, I would book some shows. I was way back. Book some shows, play some shows. You know. I see. I see the Gibson. Up the market is what you make of it. Yeah, she's a she's a beaut. That's just she's gorgeous. Good huh? I do want to. I need a new cabinet. This I got this Marshall cabinet right here. Um, shut, shut it's up. pretty good. It where it works pretty well. It gets it gets the job done. But so I that, need something uh, better. That show at the church that you booked us at? Oh my god, the um, uh, Curie of Ours. Yeah. The Curie of Ours my, gig. My little 10, I 10 watt that. amp or whatever got stolen at that gig. Really? Who would steal something from Dude, the church? I'm sorry about that. No, that's not your fault, but I'm just saying, like, morally. Like, I, we don't got to go into religion at all, but, like, who would steal something, like, in you a church? You know something? There was a band from New Jersey there. Must have been them. Definitely a Jersey Go band. on, damn, New Jersey. <laughs> 
Hey, we're going to take their little 10 watt amp because it's real cute. It's better than what they have. I'm going to sure. give it to my goldfish. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah, that was a, that was a good show. I, I was with White. Was I, was, I was playing with White Horizon back then. What a that, throwback. That was me, David Freeze, Bobby McGetrick, Matt Callow. That's all. What a lineup. What a lineup. We did okay that show. That wasn't our best show, but it was also one of our first ones. Yeah, I remember okay. that show vividly because your brother, Chris, was dancing his ass off hell yeah he was i and, remember that too and every show since i've been with him he's dancing he's always off. dancing yeah yeah no my little brother's always dancing dude that's it that's so that. i don't know Good if you've ever seen this but uh i got this trumpet tattoo oh shit all right but so that, that's little talks because that's the first song we ever played on stage really yeah. all right yo so for those of you who who are listening he's he's flexing this i'm tattoo. trying not to flex because i'm you flexing you're too. flexing baby don't worry about it <laughs> he's got this trumpet that has, uh, I guess, a vapor trail coming out of it. So it's a treble clef. With music. Uh, oh, my God. You're right. It is so a treble clef. So the straight clef. part is a trumpet and then oh the hooked part. Oh, my God. Yeah. That's a great tattoo. Thank you. So thank it's you. a treble. The, the vapor trail creates a treble clef. And in the treble clef is a series of notes. And these notes are the first song that you wrote with Wait For It. That we played. So that it's of played. Monsters and Men, Little oh. Talks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, dude. So Monsters that's that. and Men. Now that's a throwback. I dude, still still, them still slaps. Still For slaps. sure. You throw that on the car, you get what? everybody singing. Yeah, dude. Bo- you notice they both had such unique voices. Oh, yeah. And they're from Iceland, so that automatically gives them another layer of cool. Right. And you got horns in the song. You ever been to Iceland? No. I really want to go. Same. I really want to go. So, a friend of mine was recently there, and they said it was like one of the best places I've ever been to. And she's very well-traveled. So, I was like, I feel like if you're saying that, I got to check it out. I had a buddy of mine I used to work with. Uh, um. I uh, relatively kept in touch with him, and he's a stand-up comedian. And I guess he booked himself in Iceland, or he went on a trip to Iceland. But he went there. He ended up in Iceland. He definitely. ended. He he. Iceland took him. Just Iceland stole him. took him. He married. An, he married an Iceland wow. girl. Yeah, no, Iceland took him. He's having a great time. He's great. No, um, uh, you can find him if you look up uh the the only Jew in Iceland. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's great. That's just awesome. A, just a small little, small little plug. But yeah, dude, I've always wanted to go to Iceland. It, it looks, it looks like gorgeous. A, I'm about. I like seeing cool scenery. Yeah. And uh, wow, well, like that's what made Amsterdam cool because that was one of the first vacations I went where I really like dove into the culture. Yeah. Normally, I love going to places like Colorado and just seeing the scenery. Yeah. You know, but dude, so if you're ever when you're back in Europe on your way to Iceland, maybe stop over in Austria. Okay. So I would say Munich for a couple of days and then Austria. In Austria, there's a animal preserve or anim- a reservation, I guess, where they save old circus animals. And like wow. a- any animal that like would be put down otherwise, they will like take them in. Oh. So like peacocks, rabbits, horses, donkeys. There's dogs, cats. There's like, dude, <laughs> there's like six acres, I want to say, of just animals. And you can go and tour and have lunch and hang out and have a couple of beers. <laughs> It is one of the most beautiful places, like the scenery in the mountains. Oh my god! In the Alps in Austria, it's one of the most. It's so sick. And my cousin used to work there. My cousin's husband used to work there, and we went to visit him. And we're there, and as he's showing us around, <laughs> he uh smooth, good catch. Yeah, right. Uh, as he's showing us around, some like young intern, I guess, or like trainee, comes running over. He's like Rico. You gotta come help us. And this is an Austrian guy, by the way, n- yeah. named Rico. Oh my god! He's like, you gotta come help us. And so he's like, all right, I'll be right back. And he runs over, and like this horse wouldn't get up. She was like hurt or sick or something. She wouldn't get up. And like if horses lay down because they're so heavy, they like will die. Oh, if Jesus. they don't, if they don't stand up enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because yeah. like they're, uh, I don't know. I'm not a horseologist. We'll but... have to have Shane Driscoll back on the podcast for that one. Serious. Oh, I miss that kid so much. Great episode. One of my favorite episodes. Having when I had Shane on basis to wait for it basis full circle wait for it. yeah oh my um, God. there you go look at that so and like rico like lays down and like is petting this horse and like whispering in his ear and the horse stands right up it was one of the most magical Whoa. experiences of my whole entire life he's, he's animals like, are interesting definitely Fickle animals creatures. are interesting you ever hear of do you know what Chiyu kaku is no i believe this is his theory he has this theory that like every living thing has a level of consciousness but like there's like levels, there's like bits, like okay. a blade of grass is like one bit of consciousness and a worm is like 16 bits, but okay. uh, a mouse is like 71 bits and so on and so forth. 
do you believe in something like that? Like, do you think there might be an animal, say, like a like a dolphin that has a higher level of consciousness than, say, a squirrel? I feel like it's got to be right. Like there has to be some. A There's got to be like, something. A hierarchy of like. I don't, and it doesn't have to be necessarily that extreme, of like one to like hundred or like whatever. Yeah, no, exactly. I'm just trying to find but, some way of measuring it. I mean, dolphins for sure. Just the fact, like the whole study with like them like communicating with humans. No, their and stuff languages like that. are great. They, yeah. their, their ability to communicate. And that's like is what we were talking about with dogs. It's like they understand yeah. us. There was a study that determined like certain breeds of dogs are intelligent enough to understand. Like humans. apparently, like golden retrievers yeah. are like. Where they're like, yeah. when it's they're like hooked symbiotic. up to it, yeah. it's like symbiotic with the human. <laughs> and that, that was the whole, does your dog name you thing. Yeah, exactly. We talked about that before yeah. too, does your dog name you. And it's like, yeah, these no, they guys, have yeah, to be. They have some reference of you in their, yeah. in their memory. They have something if they, they need, can label you as. I know my dog and my buddy around the corner, <laughs> Tim McGovern. I don't know if you remember the name. Say the name again. Tim McGovern. Tim McGovern. Or his brother Terrence is older, but they both went to Shamana. Terrence McGovern. No, I don't know these people. So he lives Shout around the corner from me. He's a homie. Uh, Shout out to the home Fortnite duo partner. Shout out uh, to the Fortnite duo partner. He, uh, his dog and my dog see each other around the block all the time, so I feel like they have to have one some way of like saying like, "Oh, hey, how's Tim?" or like, "How's Rob?" to each other, right? Because they like maybe they got a reference, or like, "Do you see my human?" like that kind of thing. Yeah, they got to reference us in in some way. I don't know. That's like a huge. There has to be right. There has to be because. Domesticated dogs, pet dogs, like they they understand to. What's well, like the they, chicken nuggets thing you were saying? It's, it's like the, exactly. They're smart enough to get They're chicken nuggets. Enough. They're smart enough. And to... anyone who's listening, you you listen. Anyone who's listening, you can look up this video. You can type in like Beagle. Beagle steals kitchen nuggets. Did I say kitchen nuggets. I didn't want to say it. I said kitchen nuggets. Yeah. Jesus, man. Well, this is good whiskey. Thank you for bringing it. It's obviously doing the trick. But it's called Beagle steals chicken nuggets. And this motherfucker, he he's, he scopes out the whole kitchen. They filmed him. The, the people weren't home. He scopes out the whole kitchen, starts like using his head and his paws to knock a, a chair into place, hops up on the chair, hops up on the counter, uses one paw to hold the toaster oven down, and scrapes these chicken nuggets out of the toaster and devours them. He was so smooth, I thought he was going to put the chair back. But he didn't put the chair back. That would have been too far, right? Yeah, that would have been too far. That would have that would have been a human in a beagle costume. But he was so smooth, I thought he was gonna do it. Nah, man, I love. I'm gonna have a dog one day. I got to get better at taking care of myself. Do you know what kind? But I don't know what kind. It's really gonna depend on where I'm living because where I'm living yeah, is gonna depend sense. on the size of it. Yeah, I prefer bigger dogs. Okay. I have a soft spot for corgis. <laughs> so does cor- Joe. I think corgis are adorable, dude. I think they're and they're really smart. Speaking of smart dogs, See? corgis are fucking geniuses. So, did you watch Brooklyn Nine Nine? Yes, I did. But rest in peace, Cheddar. Dude. Rest in peace. What rest was it? Pe- Stewart. I want to say Stewart. What the re- dog's the, real the, name? Yeah, I don't know the dog's real name. I but know either way, Cheddar. I didn't want to bring up that he died, but holy shit, that is the cutest dog. Oh my god, he's so chubby. Yeah, he's so that chubby. Ass. Oh my god, nah, corgis are great dogs. You know I- their asses float in pools. Really? Yeah. It's like if they did nothing, they would just be like ass up yeah. on the water. That's so. Kind there's of a video of one trying to swim, and he had his front paws on like the step of the pool, and his ass was floating. It was floating up <laughs> against yeah. his. Oh, that's hilarious, dude! Now I got a soft spot for Siberian huskies. Oh damn! Because they look like wolves. I get that. You know, but then I also have a soft spot for golden retrievers, which couldn't be any less wolf. All smiles. All smile, but that's what I like about them. I'm like that would be just such a good influence to yeah, the home. Come home. It would be like All a golden smiles. retriever is just a good influence to like anyone who's living there. Like whatever your problem is, you just look at you like, what's wrong, dude? Like we're chilling. <laughs> we're living our in there, food yeah. in your stomach. We're good. Come on. We're alive, man. We can go be walk. Happy. You want to walk? We can walk. Like imagine sometime. I bet you there's some dogs out there that take their humans for walks. Oh, definitely. Like I got to get this motherfucker out of the house. That's like therapy dogs, right? <laughs> it's like he needs to get out. Like let's get oh, him. When I was flying to Amsterdam, somebody had like a therapy. Mm. Um, I think it was a pug. It was a therapy That's pug. That's adorable. Oh, uh, yeah, it was like an emotional support dog and the most well-behaved, probably the most well-behaved living thing on the plane. Yeah. My dog could never do that. He barks too much. Yeah, because the ears probably pop. And yeah. for them, that's probably crazy. I don't know. He's never, he's been on a plane once and that's when we brought him home from, <laughs> dude, Boise. Boise? Well, yeah. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, half Havanese, half Bichon, named Ollie. He's the cutest thing. Ollie? Yeah. Well, shout out to Ollie. Uh... <laughs> He's really cute. When we got him, he was a lot quieter. It was way cuter. (laughs) 
Dude, he barks so much, and his like a tiny dog. He's like thirty pounds, maybe twenty five pounds. So like, his bark cuts right through you. Yeah, I believe yeah. it. Just that high frequency. Oh yeah. It's like anything sets him off too. Jesus. Well, we've been going for forty minutes, and I haven't brought up the uh, famous question, so I'm gonna okay. bring it up. And this is the first time we're talking about this since the Elon Musk uh, press conference. Oh yeah, I read about this. Chip gang. Getting chipped, Mister Mutarelli, are 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 you going to follow through with this plan that the Silicon Valley tech giants have to put chips in our brain to make us symbiotic with the internet? So coming into this, I was like hard no on it, and I want to say soft no now just because I've been like drinking a little bit. But <laughs> uh, I so my cousin. I don't know if you ever met Mike. He's one of the smartest guys I know. What's Mike's last name? Is he a Mutarelli too? Yeah, he's a Mutarelli. I don't think so then. Uh, one of the smartest guys I know uh, was telling me, and he's like super sketched out by AI. And I always was too, just because like... All right, yeah, so he thinks about it. Yeah. Anyone who thinks about it gets sketched out. There's exactly. no way not to get the, sketched out. There's a whole like Reddit thread about how like if, you're, if you work with AI and in cybersecurity you don't have any of those smart home devices. And if your printer makes a funny noise, you unplug it and throw it out. Like, that kind of thing. Like, people who really? work with technology do not trust technology. So, and That's he brought bone up That's bone-chilling, dude. That's bone-chilling. He brought up a thing with AI where, I think it was Google, was teaching these two AI robots how to play an ancient, I want to say Japanese or Korean, board game. Like, been around for millennia. And they taught it to them, and they started beating the world's best players at it, and then developing new moves that, that nobody's ever seen before. So, for it to outsmart 2,000, 3,000 years of humanity, like, just like that, eh, get that thing the fuck away from me. Like, I don't want that in my head. I don't well, know. Like, I feel like it's going to... Apparently, and this is the thing that terrifies me. I feel like it's going to take me over. That's here's, it. here's the thing that terrifies me. Here's the thing that terrifies okay. me. If Elon Musk is talking about consumers doing this in 2020, doesn't that mean the military's already done this? Probably, right? Yeah, that's also, what scares me. Also, the turnaround scares me. Like you just said, like it, it's got to be in place already to have it consumer ready by 2020 in six months yeah i don't know i'm not yeah here's the thing there's one thing i've noticed i've talked to so many people about this Mm -hmm. 30 plus people on this fucking podcast i've talked to about this very fucking thing give or take the medicinal benefits are so alluring okay the fact that like Every cancer is going to get caught at stage one because that chip knows how to recognize mm-hmm. it. You get that alert. Hey, you got stage one cancer, but good news. It's only stage one. Go get it taken care of. You're good. Yeah. 90, 99% survival rate stage one. Go take care of it. Boom. The The idea that like if a heart attack is incoming, you can have like a 15-minute warning so you can call the ambulance. Hey, I got the warning from my chip. Please send an ambulance. I'm mm. going to have a heart attack. Or you know any combination of these medicinal benefits it could provide. That is such an attractive no, thing. No, for sure. And and try to think about it like a parent who wants to protect their children. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I can't yeah, this is what I'm that. saying. It's like, <laughs> you notice how like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my little tinfoil hat on here. Does your parent, oh, no. Do your parents have this thing ring? Oh, fucking hate that They thing. have it? Yeah. You notice that the government became a surveillance state when we were kids and now that yeah. we're adults, our parents have become a surveillance yeah. state? Dude, it's this kind of stuff is crazy to me, man. I love like going out at night and hearing like, "Where are you going?" <laughs> yeah. like, oh, sorry, Dad, I thought you were asleep. Like, what? You got to see the humor in that, though. Yeah, it's for actually sure. kind of hilarious. Oh my god, that ring thing is. It's weird, That's dude. That's the start. It's a weird thing. Now Alexa is talking to it. Alexa, I don't like. My cousin on Fox. I could see Ring being beneficial. Yeah, Alexa, I don't like. Well, like the whole. Uh, Alexa controls my thermostat thing. Like, that's where it starts. That's where she kills me. She makes it too hot. When you're not home. Yeah. You're not home. She could just be bumping your heat a little bit. Yeah. Or, like, setting the AC, racking up my 
electric bill. When you're not home. Now I'm broke. Who fucking knows it's when Amazon, you're not home? It's Amazon's fault. Dude, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Sorry, you can't trust it. Sorry, it's, Elon. You know what it is, dude? Is like I'll have to text him later and tell him. No, I love, I love, <laughs> I love living in like a suburban or an urban area. You know. Yeah. But sometimes I wonder if like shit's gonna get so crazy, I'm just gonna run to the country. Dude, I've had that thought like every other <coughs> week, where I'm just like, I think about it every once in a while. I could just get up, go build a house in the woods. You buy an acre of land. Anywhere inland America, you just go a hundred miles off the fucking coast. Yeah. Anywhere in this country, you can buy property dirt fucking cheap. So you just got to be off the fucking water. I remember when we were, we were talking about when to do this. Or you know, like, not in a city. <laughs> we we're talking about when to do this. I'm like, I can't do uh, August because I'm going away, going to North Carolina. Mm-hmm. My uncle has a lake house. His house awesome. costs X amount of dollars. I don't want to. I don't want to flex on him. Cost X amount of dollars on the lake. The one across the street is like, like a third less, like literally, and you're paying that much just for the. So just if you because think, it's just because it's not on. Water. And you're paying a third less across the street, and like you go a mile and a half more inland, it's like dirt cheap. It's like that's ridiculous. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I feel like it's all a joke. So you move. It's it's just Long Island, man. It's scary. And like people ask me what a like because I want to be a teacher. They're like, do you want to teach on Long Island? I'm like, I'd love to, but like, I don't know if I can afford to live here for real. Well, that's the thing is, it's not cheap. I, I do all right. I do all right here in this apartment, but it's not cheap. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder if it's like better to. It was like top three taxes in the whole country. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah. Once you start paying property tax. Yeah, exactly. You know, which if you're going to be a homeowner, that's something to think about. And it's like, you know, the thing is, I don't know about you, but I got a lot of family here. Yeah, same. Like so many people I love are here. And it's like, well, I could see the benefit in settling down around here mm-hmm. just because there's so much support. And you never know when you're going to need it. Um, But Jesus Christ, like like we're mentioning, it's like if you just go away from the water. Yeah. Even like just, I mean, like Queens, Long Island, like Long Island City. Like I that. used to, I went to college in uh, Orange County, New York, and mm-hmm. there were a lot of areas there like Beacon. Which are really nice yeah, Newburgh, neighborhoods. Newburgh Beacon, like you yeah. find a nice spot, like not that expensive. Really nice neighborhoods, you know. But like compared to here, I don't want to say it's here. like cheap, but like, yeah, no, no, it's not cheap. It's still I don't, I, I don't make enough to call anything cheap. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But I, I, that's what I kind of find funny, man. Is like our generation is like we're 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 like jizzing over the fad of tiny houses. Yeah, and like we think it's hip and cool. It's like no, that's 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 what being broke is. <laughs> <laughs> like you're resorting, yeah. to that. Like, like the, do you ever see that HGTV show? Yes, well, the tiny homes. Yeah. I do enjoy the show because they're cool. It's an awesome show, but like, I think it'd think... be a cool thing to have like in your backyard. I would tow that maybe. That too. Yeah, you know. But like, I can't see spending because like they spend a good amount of money on that. Like, yes. Like you could get a decent house somewhere else. You don't need you to be can get a, yeah, exactly. Santa Monica thing. with a tiny there house. There are some like, people who spend six figures on a tiny yeah. home. I'm like, just move to fucking New Hampshire and you could have yeah, three you'll be acres. Ju- you'll be just as off the grid. Just in Seriously. <laughs> like, Seriously. But it's it's wild, man. You have to think that eventually at some point it's going to have to tip. Because like, it's, I mean, I feel like it's Who's, like who's going to pay? Now. Who's going to pay? Yeah. Who's going to pay? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's the thing. It's gonna, it's gonna, uh, a bubble's gonna have to burst eventually, but we'll see. I'm, I'm not an economist. Oh, jeez, we've covered quite a lot. Not a money doctor, dude. We're already 50 minutes in, dude. Yeah, I love it. How long do these go for? Uh, we usually do them for an hour. Okay, so we got like minutes? 10 minutes left. Is there, is there anything you wanted to cover in specific? Is there anything? No, I was, no? I was like super nervous going into it. I'm glad it yeah, kind of flew by no. like that. <laughs> no, no, I remember that's in the beginning. A lot of people are nervous when they first come in here and they tell me that. I'm like, there's nothing to be nervous about. I don't about. know why, like, I said I was nervous about hearing my own voice, but I do that for a living, so like, I don't know why. Because I guess maybe because you're talking and it's just so. different than music. It's like what we're talking about, it's a different circuit, you know? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. No, but it, it fly. These things fly right by us. We, I don't think we kept a single conversation that whole time. We definitely no. We kept branching out. It happens. It definitely does happen. I, I love those kind of podcasts though, because it's really just having a conversation, dude. Yeah, that's exactly. why I love so much about it, and that's why people. Some people come in here and they get nervous. I'm like, don't complicate it. Yeah, like we were I just it, we were just well, talking I, out there, like we were yeah. just doing this. Well, because we were talking about like what podcasts we listen to, and I feel like they when you listen to one, it feels so structured it does but it's really not but it's not when you kind of do at it at least those are the ones i like as opposed to like hard i mean i also history. i like, also listen to like some history ones and some like true crime ones uh 
so I when they're telling they're re- literally reading notes at you. So I feel like that's why I was kind of like okay. And I, I did. <laughs> Chris was there. I did a drunk history night. I don't. Know, was he there? Oh, now I, I love feel drunk like an history. For saying it. Drunk history is hilarious. But we like at my cousin's place. Like him, his girlfriend, a couple of my friends came by and we did a drunk history night. And everyone picked a story and we just like got like got good, smashed. good and tipsy and like told some stories and that's hilarious. It was rad. That's cool. So what well, what do you do in your spare time when you're not drunk historying and musicking? So I, I run. Your brother's got me on a track schedule. He's got you on a run. Yeah. Running is good, man. Toughens you up. Definitely. It's about, oof, that heat killed me. I took a couple days off. You can't off. run in this kind of heat. Yeah. The heat we had this weekend, you can't run in that shit. 114, no thank you. So uh, I, like we were saying before, I, I enjoy playing video games, and, like literally anything. Well, what are you gaming on right now? Uh, Fortnite. A lot. Yeah, uh, embarrassingly Fortnite, enough. How how long have you been playing Fortnite for? Because that's that that's been going on a while, dude. So I feel like uh, it stole Overwatch's thunder as like definitely. the main like. Because I never got into game. Overwatch. It was just like dude, too much happening in front of bro, me. Bro, I was so into Overwatch, and then you Fortnite motherfuckers came in. Now Overwatch blew it. Fortnite didn't do anything. Overwatch. Dude, blew my it. buddy plays Overwatch like top fifty in the world kind of thing. It's a great fucking game, dude. And I it's enjoy a watching great it, fucking but... game. No, honestly, yeah, that's one of the video games that like if I'm gonna watch a Twitch streamer, I watch yeah. someone play Overwatch. No, it's a great game. It was so much fun. I remember partying up with a at least when I was really playing this game like two years ago. Partying up with all my friends yeah. and just fucking wreaking havoc. You know, we all got home from work. We all made dinner and hung out. Nice. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm doing now with like Fortnite. So like Tim McGovern, like I said, and one of his buddies Sean, uh down, they went. They all went to U Grant and played soccer together. Like all of his soccer buddies, I'm the only one on PS4. That's kind of sucky. They all I have see, Xboxes. I see. But whatever, it's cool. I'm a Wait. PS4 guy too. Thank God. Yeah, uh, dude. Next I got right there. I'm chilling right there. Spider Man, Bloodborne, Spider Man Two. I'm playing Spider Man right now. Soon. I'm playing Spider Man right so now. So good. I just twitched it earlier. I'm in love with this game. Dude, the they DLC so is so good. good. Once you're done, oh my god. Yeah, I'm probably gonna dive into the DLC. I might get Fire Emblem Heroes, but Spider Man's okay. really Spider Man's really got me hooked right now. The combat is so much fun. It's it's so much fun. It just keeps you busy. Like the the and, side quests feel like part of the story. It's a great game. And even just free it. swinging, dude. Yeah, the, dude. Finally, why did we have to go wait from PS One all the way up to PS Four to get an like a comparable Spider Man game? I remember there was one on PS Two that was all right. I think that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, there I was one on PS Two that I really liked. But you're right, and this one is unbelievable, dude. It's just like, so easy. It makes sense. You feel so free, and you it's feel like, like Spider Man. And you know what I like about it? Do you see the movie, by the way? I have not. Okay. I, you know, I, I gotta go. I can't get my lines crossed. I'm gonna finish this game, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna watch the movie. But check it. I'm uh. How about the anime one? Sorry to cut you off. One more haven't seen that. Into the Spider Verse. <sighs> that's that's on Netflix. I'm probably gonna see that one first. Um, damn. Now I lost my train of thought. I was thinking Spider Man. What I really like about it, which I think the cinematic universes have been lacking, is like this is about Spider Man. Every cinematic universe. We're listening. We're we're getting Peter Parker's origin story, or he's a young yeah. boy. Like what I like about this game is like yeah, this is what the man is dealing with. He's he's almost thirty. Like he's exactly. he's got shit to go to deal with, and he's been through shit. And yeah. he's got he's already an established he's an established guy in the city. Like he has his place, he has his role. It's it's a different perspective yeah. than I'm used to seeing at least cinematically. And I'm in love with the game. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be. I think you're gonna dig the animated movie then a lot. Into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Well, I heard Nicolas Cage is Noir Spider Man. Yeah. So like, I'm gonna go crazy for <laughs> the, that. The whole bit with him, like, they give him a Rubik's cube and he's like, "What color is this?" <laughs> God damn it! Oh god, maybe and, I'll watch it. And John Mulaney. Spider Ham. Spider Ham. I, I yeah. yeah. My last guest told me all about fucking Spider Ham. <laughs> God man, the last guest beat me to it. Damn it! I love how literally the last guest. Shout out to Matt Taylor. Um, but it's a great episode. Ugh. Voice crack. Super ham, dude. Spider ham. Excuse me. Feeling the whiskey. Definitely. This is this is, this yeah, is really. I'll bring good. it back to what I what I'm up to. Uh, playing Fortnite. I'm taking summer classes. I have one more semester, then I'm student teaching, and then I'll be certified K through twelve teaching music. Booyah. Choir, choir, band, general music, history, stuff like that. Very cool. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I'm teaching right now, so I'm, re- I'm ready to start you, doing it full time. Good for so. you. Good and for you. Other than that, I'm gigging. Like I said, Bratwurst Boys. Check us out. It's a lot of fun. Bratwurst Boys have an Instagram? like uh, uh, Instagram, website, Facebook. Snapchat's coming. So Where they can find you? Just at Bratwurst Boys? At the Bratwurst Boys, yeah. 
at the Bra- the Browers Boys. The Browers Boys. Okay, yeah. so at the Browers Boys. The Browers Boys dot com across all platforms. And yeah. Snapchat's coming soon. Album's coming soon. Album's coming soon. Yeah. When's the album coming? I think this September. This September? Yeah. And then we so got, you got t- t-shirts got, coming. If you want to send somebody back on here and promote it, please. Definitely. It'll probably be me. Those guys are assholes about doing anything. Well, so. they're in their 30s. Yeah. They was got, it, they Nick, got real Nick jobs Greg to and do. Joe? Nick Greg and Joe? Nick Greg and Rich. Nick Greg and Rich. I keep yeah. forgetting Rich's name. <laughs> <laughs> it's because they're not going to listen to this. That's why. <laughs> oh, We shit. actually just did like a radio spot. Uh at NAS- NCC. Really? Yeah, yeah they have a German... Very cool. They have, uh, Uwe Riggers has a German radio show, and he had us on for two hours for like a charity No broadcast. shit. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Playing that, playing pit music for like musicals and stuff to like, get a little money, and then... Doing your just thing. Living, just living. So you're going to tour summers when you're a, pit, when you're a teacher? You're gonna tour yeah, summers? I hope so. I figured that would be the plan. Nick just moved to Baltimore, actually, our accordion player. Baltimore. Yeah. Interesting. So he's been traveling to all the gigs, so it's been a little rough right now. So I don't know. Hopefully we're still playing when I'm teaching. So that's all I'll say. I'm sure you will. And I love even those if, guys. And, so. even, and even if not, you'll you maybe not as much, but we'll definitely get together because I somebody as talented you somebody as talented as you is always gonna have oh, a gig. Well thank you. Absolutely. But we gotta we gotta wrap this up soon. All right. So I figure this is a good time for you to get any final plugs in. Let people know where to find you. Let them know what's coming. Any last messages? Just sound off. This oh, is man. it. The mic is yours. That camera. That camera. That camera. Watch that, hot ones? Yeah, watch hot ones. Yeah. <laughs> this camera. That this cam- camera. That this camera. camera. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the Broadwish Boys, like I said, touring all summer, all Oktoberfest season. I, if you come check it out, please like come up to the trumpet player, say hey, I heard you, because like I love talking to people. I, that's why I love playing music is like getting to see how people enjoyed it. Uh that's it i mean i'm playing music hanging out if i teach your kid one day that'd be rad i think i guess that's it well you said you used to stream and you want to get back on yeah streaming. i used so to where play can you be found on twitch uh <laughs> rito rob r-i-t-o-r-o-b rito rob? yeah because i used to play uh i used to stream league league of yeah. lol yeah. oh man that's like an embarrassing i don't one know about those. embarrassing but that's like an old school rob thing it's like me and my roommate in binghamton chris Steffen. Uh, used to play some like, LOL. The guy across the hall was like Challenger. He was like way too good for us, <laughs> but like we would stream together and we'd hang out. So, and then I streamed a little bit of Fortnite. I actually played Fortnite from Five Towns really? for their college team. Yeah, that's. Sick. I was like pretty nasty, and then I like stopped giving a shit. So now, now I'm here. Now you're here. Yeah. All right. So thank you for listening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Rob Uterelli, thank you so much for coming on, dude. dude. Thank you for having. We'd me. love to have you back. Yeah, definitely. Anytime. Thank you again for listening, everybody. Take care. And forever and ever and ever, whatever it is beyond that, what you might call God in the Western tradition or Brahman in Hindu philosophy or Tao in Chinese. Every one of us is really that, but we are pretending we aren't. And we are pretending with tremendous skill and deception. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you you really?